Gentlemen, welcome to the interview. We have Mr. Gancho and Mr. Humble Dink for this one. This interview is brought to you by GameKale, making gaming mainstream. My name is Naveed, also known as Barely Average Gaming. Um, our guest today, Mr. Gancho, he is the front man, the leader of Gage Rage, one of the fastest growing esports combat leagues in the world. And also we have Mr. Humble Dink. He wears many hats. He is a commentator. He is a streamer. He manages stuff behind the scenes for Cage Rage as well. He runs a news channel. He does interviews. He does everything Johnny Sins can. So we have a great uh, line of questions. We have great things coming up in this one. Gancho, how are we doing today? Doing very well, Navid. Hello, everyone who's watching the interview. I am Gancho, the owner of Cage Rage Championship, and looking forward to some good questions from GameCal today. No pressure there. Humble, how are we doing? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for this interview. Um, I'm really looking forward to the interview. It's going to be a great one for everybody to listen to and a great one to break down our minds and what goes beyond behind Cage Rage and how we think. Absolutely. Um, coming back to you, Gancho. So we, I've just mentioned about Cage Rage, the fastest growing esports league that we have uh, for combat sports. Um, just give me a brief about, just give us a brief about how it came about and what Cage Rage essentially is. Well, Cage Rage uh, is really an idea that I came at a very long time ago uh, from the days of UFC Undisputed, really. Uh, but back in the day, we didn't have any online gameplay. We didn't have uh, uh, either uh, LAN or online servers, you know. It wasn't possible to play with uh, people around the world. So generally, the, the idea was uh, bringing people together in some gaming uh, cafes or, you know, internet cafes, gaming zones, stuff like that, and make them fight each other. After that, the idea kind of went away because life came, comes first as, uh, as usual. Uh, but uh, let's uh, say three uh, to four years from now, uh, I decided to buy a PlayStation 4 uh, just because I wanted to play UFC, because I wanted to spar with people. I wanted to play the game because I wasn't able to play the game in real life. I wasn't able to spar because of real life injuries. And that's how I started playing QFC. And uh, right after that, I started thinking, isn't there any life league out there? Has nobody made anything like that? And I found ESFL. And uh, I even competed in ESFL. I really liked the idea. And I decided to make my own league because I didn't have any... Um, you know, I didn't have a, a good enough PC. I didn't have uh, the, the necessary stuff to, to make a stream, basically. And most importantly, back then, I didn't have the time. Uh, so, you know, you've been part of Kate Rich uh, since the weekly days. Um, same as uh, Scott Hector, rest on his uh, soul. And, um, yeah, uh, soon after that, I decided to expand after getting uh, almost 500 members in the group, where almost half of them were competing every now and then and yeah i decided to get myself a pc but before i got myself a pc i found uh, a friend of mine who had a good enough uh, technique and i started uh, streaming every saturday on his pc for the first i believe uh, month and a half and yeah after that it's all history Absolutely. Uh, Humble, you've been associated with Cage Rage uh, for a while now. Um, just tell us about how did you uh, get to know Mr. Gancho and how did you really put rocket boosters towards the growth of the league that is Cage Rage? Um, my, my internet might be a bit unstable here because it keeps telling me that, but uh, if you guys can hear me clearly. And um, basically, I think I started around five months ago. Um, I basically was a player on UFC 3 and UFC 2. I played all the UFC games. I've loved UFC for years. I've always, that's been my main hobby. Um, obviously, being involved in esports and my background, which I'll get into, um, I kind of played this game and didn't think there was really a market for it. I didn't really know about the leagues. I didn't know about um, the community in general. And I actually started to just develop my own YouTube channel. And 
I did something called hunting the top 100, which is basically like an average player like myself who was trying to strive for that top 100. I thought it'd make quite a cool little idea to hunt the top 100 and then make a video about either beating them or them beating me and what I learned from them beating me. And I came across a guy called uh, Sick War, as we all know as Fabio. And I ended up beating Sick War in our first matchup um, and then posting it on, on my YouTube and it got quite a few hits. It got like a couple of hundred hits, which was good for at the time. And um, then I seen something online with his name, uh, um, Sick War, and it was something to do with uh, Cage Rage fighting. Now, Cage Rage for me is a, it's actually a, it's a UFC MMA organization in England that where some people that you probably know, like uh, Anson Silver and a few other people have fought in, in that sort of promotion before. So I wasn't quite aware what this was. And then, Instantly, I actually messaged Gancho and said, is your champion sick one? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, I beat him. He was like, cool, he's the league. Come and join. And the rest is history, Navid. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, so for everyone listening, uh, sick war is actually a former world number one on Cage Rage UFC 4. So beating him is no easy feat. I've done it a couple of times myself, not going to flex that. But <laughs> anyways, uh, back to the interview. So... Like you've mentioned, uh, Gancho, that Cage Rage came about, how, how it came about, how you managed to really conceptualize an idea and bring it to reality. But obviously, when you're trying to manage a league, you're trying to expand it. It's, uh, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of time and effort. So uh, for anybody streamers out there, uh, can you just tell them that it's not just the glitz and glory of getting the viewers and getting recognition? What goes behind uh, running a successful stream? Yeah, really. It, there's a lot behind uh, a stream like Cage Rage. Not all streamers are the same like we do, though. Um, we need to kind of manage uh, a, a massive amount of people, uh, and it all happens live. So there's no recorded fights, uh, nothing like that. So uh, th that's uh, hard on on its end. But really, what it what is important is to be different than anything uh, to, than anyone else. Try and make uh, your streams uh, as uh, different as possible. Just put as much content, content as possible. And even if, it, uh, if it's something similar than someone else is doing, just try and bring uh, your, your personality in it and, and just put as many different ideas as possible um, and try and develop it. And of course, promotion is very, very important. You need to promote on uh, as many platforms as possible and really connect with the people. Because in order to be a streamer, in order to be a, a public personality, you need to communicate with people. You can't be just like a statue. Absolutely agree to that. And we're going to come towards uh, the marketing bit that you just mentioned. Uh, and I'll uh, go into detail uh, with Humble on that. So Humble, uh, being a regular streamer yourself and uh, uh, being part of the gaming community as extensively as you are, what do you think uh, makes the stream successful when it comes to uh, getting the numbers there? Because at the end of the day, um, when you're looking at the uh, when you when you're looking at the tangibles, which necessarily dictate whether a stream is successful or not, you have to have certain things in mind. You have to have a certain structure, and I believe that's something that you've been able to bring to Cage. Can you uh, just go into a little detail? On that? Yeah. So. I'll, I'll tell you guys kind of what I do in my day job and how, how this impacts what I did in Cage Rage. So I work for a company called Belong Gaming Arenas, which is a huge organization in England at the moment. Uh, we've just been bought out. Basically, what we do is we have gaming arenas all across the country and we build communities around games at a grassroots level and then build them up to professional players and then send them off to these teams so they can get hired and and play for massive teams and play in organizations. At the moment, we're becoming a, a major organization in itself, so it's actually beneficial to play for us. But what we've got to do is look at all the fundamentals from from the community, from the players' um, from logos, to uh, how the player plays, how they're represented, the, the communication with the broadcast team, the building a, building a stream, doing all that sort of stuff. We've got to look at absolutely everything, but the main thing I do is organization. Um, when I came into Cage Rage, I, I literally just looked at a few things and and seen there was um, there was some aspects of Cage Rage that I could 100% improve. 
And when I came in, I basically started working with Gancho immediately on the, on the broadcast team. We were talking regularly and we just started putting plans together. And that's the key. Um, one of the things I really wanted to do with Gancho is make like a yearly plan of like what we wanted to do, like a goal in mind and, and, and really hit them, them, them targets and achievements by setting plans and organizations. He already had plans, but the idea of literally planning each week, having something on a Monday, having something on a Tuesday, having something on a Wednesday, because this is, a vol- this is a voluntary thing for both of us. This is something we do for love. Um, it still needs to be run like a business. It still needs to be run at the highest possible level. So when I came into Cadridge, I really wanted that to happen. And we've really achieved some special things in the last five months. I believe I, I, I see... I see us growing to, like on a, um, a huge, huge level. Uh, it obviously depends as well, but the main one of the main things is we've moved to Discord from Facebook. Um, we can organise ourselves so much, so much better. We have stuff like fight chats. We've got stuff where we can talk to players and eat separate things. It's not all in one channel. So, for me personally, Naveed, the the main thing that I bring and the main thing that I, I kind of want to work on is organization it's something my company does i get months in advance of what i'm going to be doing for the next month um if it's if it's sharing a new game that might be out i already get that game i already get the plan that we need to do i get targets i get achieves the achievements that we need to do i get all this already so adding that to cage rage can only make it better and adding it to our arsenal and me learning from gancho and him learning from me i think we've just started developing this thing at a rapid pace and it doesn't seem like it's going to stop at the moment you yeah, it looks like the momentum is definitely with Cage Rage and the admin team. So, great job with that. Um, speaking of day jobs, I heard a rumor that Mr. Gancho, you left your day job to pursue this full time. Can you just go into a detail about why that happened? Yeah, well, I basically didn't like my job at, at first place, uh, really. I mean, I enjoyed it at first because I'm a salesman. But it kind of sticks in your uh, in your daily regime, and all the same stuff doesn't lead you to a good place, really. So pursuing your dreams is the best thing you can do, really. You know. So I decided to give it a go. Uh, I saw uh, there's potential in Cage Rage. Uh, I saw that the more time I, I put into it, the more time I invest myself into promotion, making videos, just managing how everything works, works, um, putting ideas into reality. And, uh, and it's just, uh, I, I see the development. So I decided to, why not, instead of doing it two hours to three hours per day, why not start to do it eight to 10 hours per day? And the result is, uh, is showing, really. Um, another uh, big help uh, in that has uh, Mr. Humboldt because um, it's like when, when you're running uh, a business or uh, managing a certain organization, you kind of need someone with a similar way of thinking, but critical way of thinking to make everything work. So I think uh, the fact that we're both critical to each other, but in a positive manner, helps us a lot because we share our ideas and then we kind of polish them. That's how it all works. I think there's one thing that is uh, becoming a recurring theme in this interview, and that is that when you're talking about making something successful, it requires extra effort um, and dedication in order to fulfill that. Because a lot of times you try something for a few days, a few weeks, and then you try to wing it. But in order to make something successful, you need to have two things, if I'm not wrong, and you can correct me. Uh, from Humble's perspective, you need to be organized. You need to have deadlines, timelines as to what you want to achieve. And from Gansha's perspective, you really need to put in the grind. And when you have those two things uh, at tandem, then you can really propel your growth and you can take the next step forward. So um, really good insights Absolutely. towards that. Um, okay, so the another thing that I would want... Important. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Because the curve goes up and down in any type of business. Sometimes you're going to experience down. Sometimes you get you get a little boost from the universe. Uh, mm-hmm. But in order to keep it going, there needs to be an equal amount of grind, no matter the ups or downs. Yeah, sometimes the growth plateaus and then you have to take some risk. If it pays, great. If it doesn't, you have to persist and you have to continue doing what you do. Uh, there's another venture yes. that I've heard about that you guys have recently started. I've actually uh, visited that myself and I've really thoroughly enjoyed myself. I'm talking about the Stupid Monkey talk show. So, uh, Gansho, I'll start with you. How did that name came about? Well, we're stupid monkeys, bro. Me and Humble always <laughs> joke around. 
you know that. I mean, it, it comes from a joke that came long time ago, uh, as something that I said. And yeah, we're we're stupid monkeys. We do, we do stupid uh, decisions every day, but you know, two stupid monkeys make one smart person. So <laughs> we work like one very smart person together. All right, and humble. Uh, I've noticed yeah, that the you... stupid monkey talk show is. Mm -hmm. No, no, no worries. Yeah, Sorry. Uh, let humble explain how the <laughs> stupid monkey talk show works. All right. Okay. So. Um... Me and Gancho were talking a while back and something that we realized the community really lacked, something that I work with in other communities, especially the Overwatch, League of Legends, other communities, is promotion. Um, one of the things that really is just really not around for the UC4 community and we need it to grow is the, um, a massive amount of promotion from uh, news. There's no news channels, there's no, um, there's no people pushing players individually, there's no managers, there's no people like signing these teams and kind of managing them. There's no people signing these players and managing them. So we had an idea to start something. Um, one thing a lot of people do is they, they go into a league and they see they like this league, like a league, and then they think, oh, I want a league, so I'll try and do a league. Similar to Gantra starting his own care direction, all right? But one thing that I try and do is try and help build that. I try and add something to that that's going to be beneficial to that to that actual league itself or to that community itself. And that's where esports fight news came in because what it essentially does is it binds all the communities together. Um, ESFL, Cage Rage, UFL, Prime Time. These things we, we become uh, very useful to everybody, and we can kind of promote everybody, um, giving people results for esports league, which is massive, right? The results for esports leagues is something that I've never I've never found it so hard to get hold of results that I did until I started esports fight news. The fact that we don't that everybody every league doesn't publish their own results, their own highlights, all this sort of stuff, it kind of baffled me at first. So why not do that ourselves and kind of do that? So we started esports fight news and we started doing that sort of stuff. But at the same time as doing that, we were running Cage Rage and we were growing rapidly and i mean rapidly like we doubled our viewership i think in five months we were doing crazy numbers we'd we'd gained um connections and networking with businesses and sponsors and all sorts of different things and we are looking for more if anyone's interested but we were we were basically trying to deal with all this at the same time as trying to release spots fight news so we needed a more sustainable and um effective way of kind of, of doing esports fight news so we decided to create the stupid monkeys talk show which is basically a two-hour show on a wednesday which helps grow which helps me grow my channel so i've got a huge invest in this and, and it helps gancho grow his channel by in, in that and vice versa so we did this and it's just two friends talking about different stuff but what we do is we essentially talk about the esports scene and we talk about um, what's happened over the weekend so people who are interested in usc4 can come here and literally learn about the esports scene about because it's impossible to play every league right navid you can't play a prime time you can't play you uh, UFL, you can't play a cage, you can't play all these leagues at the same time because most of them run at the same time, yet you'll be interested in them because people who you know, people that might be in your team, etc., might be in these leagues. Mm -hmm. So we're a place where literally you can come for that news and you can literally li listen and learn about who's been winning, who's been doing well, how the performance is well, and um, who's at the top of the game at the moment. And as league owners and other people, they can come there as well and scout players. It's a great way to kind of do that. And then we have a little bit of fun. We talk about the topics that have happened over the week in the community. For instance, this week that we had... Um, we had um, Dana White versus John Jones, etc. We had uh, Boxing Fanatical versus Marshall Minds because ESBC Boxing came out. We, we did a review on the esports boxing trailer. Um, in the future as well, we will be doing, we do have Barus who does interviews with UFC fighters. He wants to be able to put his shows on our show. So almost like a five minute interview with somebody like uh, Sam Alvey, uh, Randy Brown, a uh, Corey Sandhagen, uh, these type of characters. So that will be coming as well. So we'll actually have interviews from esports fight news that are going to be put onto the Stupid Monkeys talk show so people can watch them live. Um, and then we have a bit of fun and we break down the UFC that's coming up in the weekend and the news that's happened and our opinions. And we open up a bit and, and give out a bit of our personality because as, as two friends and two Stupid Monkeys, I, I think we're entertaining enough to kind of keep people engaged for two hours. And uh, it's just fun for us to do, you know. So... Two eggs in, two, sorry, two, uh, yeah, two eggs in the basket there. We're trying to put esports fight news and stupid monkeys talk show together, give people the news, and that's what you can come and see every Wednesday night. So, yeah. 
All right. So uh, coming towards the business of, of this interview, just a couple more things. Um, I would probably start with Humble on this one. So I see a lot of streamers uh, who are very talented when it comes to their content, who know how to speak, how to uh, be very presentable, are very good in, at engaging the audience. But one thing that they lack is promotion besides being live. So in order to improve your visibility to the audience, what would you suggest to them, depending on uh, whichever game that they're playing? Um, I suggest this to everybody and I suggest it with anybody in any walk of life, in any sort of business. Find out who the best person is in your community. Find out who the best people are, who are the, who are the best streamers. And then look at, other, look at other channels as well, other streamers in maybe tech and community, in, the, um, in Mortal Kombat, in other, in other kind of similar lines. And what, look at what they're doing, look at breakdown, write everything down that they're doing, write how they promote, even message them and ask them questions, ask them how they promote themselves. Just try and find out everything you can about these people. Try, it's the same with leagues as well. You look at everything they're doing. And then what you do is you write down extra stuff that you could be doing on top of that. That's better. And you try and implement that to your game. So for instance, a lot of streamers only publish when they go live. They don't talk during the week. They... They, they are very, some viewers, streamers don't even promote other streamers, which I find bizarre, especially with the audience of Twitch, something I've realized as soon as I came in this community. You have to make yourself valuable, and by making yourself valuable, you've got to promote other people. If you promote other people, you become useful, and they also promote you. If you promote 100 people a week, how many of them are going to also promote you? Say 10, 15, 20. And if you've got 20 streamers that have got an audience of 40 people, 30 people, 20 people promoting you each week, then all of a sudden you've got, you're picking up little bits from everywhere. And you'll be someone like myself who literally went into streaming with Gancho. Um, I'd started my Twitch channel um, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, Gancho, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. Yeah. And I hit affiliate in three streams. Three streams I hit affiliate. Um, which is crazy, and it's all because I network myself with the correct people. I have people like Gancho around me who can help me and, and help me get ready. He literally taught me everything I need to do and said, I'll get you affiliate very quickly. And we we made content that was actually important to the community that people really had to come and see. We did stuff like we announced the Cage Rage Friday card on the on the first 10 minutes. So that brings all the Cage Rage audience over, which is a yeah. massive community. We, mm -hmm. we post amongst groups of 10,000 people on Facebook and we post between four, 500 people on Discord. And we put that work in and we, um, two seconds. And we, we do that every single time we do it. We don't just go and uh, do videos here and there. Now I do stream. I do stream each night and stuff like that. And I do, I do the same thing that these streamers do, but I think it's incredibly important just to learn how to promote yourself and just to look at other people and how they promote themselves and then take note of that and then add it to your game. If you're not doing that, you're already losing because there's going to be no growth. There's just going to be a, a nice little line there. Um, as other people grow, you will grow as well, but you need to learn. You need to learn them skills. You need to learn the, the, talents that they have it's nothing nothing in this world is, is unlearnable you need to learn what you what other people do and you need to add that to your, your arsenal and that's how you become a better streamer that's how you get more views that's how you how you grow in this community all right so uh one more question for you Gancho. Uh, so with the advent of technology we're seeing uh communities getting better we're seeing uh, internet internet speeds getting really ballistic we have new consoles coming out uh, do you think that the model like yours that you have in Cage Rage, is this the future of esports moving forward? In my opinion, this is not uh, only the future of esports, but the future of uh, sports as well. Because esports is getting, uh, well, there's rumors that esports might be getting in, even in the Olympics. True. I don't know about UFC. <laughs> <laughs> not sure about UFC. Uh, but why not get it thereafter, 10, 15 years, for example? I think it's very possible. And, you know, it, it's a very uh, useful thing, a very useful and, and uh, pleasant way to entertain yourself, uh, whether by watching such events, if you're a fan of the game or a player, or uh, even participating in high-level uh, competition tournaments or leagues. It's, it's super fun and you're safe. You're, you're usually at home. At the same time, you meet a bunch of people from all around the world. Like, for example, I meet you two. And I wouldn't 
most probably I wouldn't have met you, which which is amazing. It's it's just great, and you find so many great friends, so many great people, and uh, like Humble said, promotion is important, but networking and getting to meet those people, speaking to them, uh, is actually way more important. Because you know, platforms have uh, like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. They all have algorithms, and people have found ways to crack those algorithms long time ago. Uh, by bots or just spams or stuff like that. But that's not, not how you grow a community. To grow a community, you need to be part of this community. You need to be uh, a leader of the community, but part of the of the people there. That's Absolutely. how it works. Yeah. All right. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, looking forward to hearing more of your thoughts. And also for everyone listening, both Humble and Gancho are available on the Game Kill community. So if you have any questions uh, to ask from them, they will definitely be able to fill you in and give you better insight towards how they do these things and perhaps even help, uh, help you or maybe guide you towards betterment of the entire community. So again, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. And uh, for anyone else who's interested, I'll be sharing the links in the description of this uh, video. So please feel free to join in the community, like our page, and uh, hope to see you guys soon, uh, pretty shortly. Thank you so much for your time.